Alright then, uh, I thought I'd upload a quick video discussing briefly the settings I use in Dota uh, and give a comparison to the maximum settings and minimum settings um, and then explain quickly why I choose those settings. Um, first things first, lots of this information came from Reddit and Logical Increments, Increments Dota page. I definitely recommend uh, having a look at that. They've done a really, really good write-up, which covers almost all this information. It's just much more spread out, whereas I'm gonna try and keep this short. So first things first, everything's on max here. This is just for um, an example. We're testing as AA, because, excuse me, I think his alt looks great. Um, and you can also sort of see his visual effects and the particles that are associated with that and how that responds to the things going on around it. Um, so all in all, um, it looks incredibly pretty. Uh, little things like your ambient creatures, uh, your fog particles, etc., all gorgeous. Um, but now let's compare that to the lowest possible settings as we destroy a tower apparently. Um, so we're going to turn all of these off um, and low low and game screen render quality to 40 which is what makes it look absolute garbage but also basically forces the biggest benefits in frames per second. Um, so basically long story short uh, while I'm playing I like to sit on 120 FPS, which you can see in the top right, and I get that on ultra down to the minimum. Um, it doesn't particularly change based on my graphics simply because of the hardware that I'm running. Um, but as you can see, this is much harder to look at, but still perfectly playable realistically. Uh, remember, of course, that I'm recording this at 1080p 30 FPS, which will naturally downscale the quality just slightly. Um, because that's what recording programs do when they compress information. So that's pretty much that, uh, and that's good. Now we're going to have a look at what I use, um, which basically is again advanced things. I like running at uh, max rendering quality. Um, if you struggle to get FPS, that it should be the first thing. Well, not necessarily the first thing, but if you really need FPS, that's the, the biggest thing to change. I don't animate my portrait. Um, I do use additive light pass. I do use ambient occlusion and normal maps. Uh, I do use ambient cloths, emulation, and anti-analyzing. Um, everything else, sorry, just swap that to high and medium. Everything else I leave off um, because I don't think it necessarily brings anything to the game and other than it looking nice, which is awesome. If you want your game to look nice, then go for it. But for me personally, I find that this here uh, visually brings benefits and still looks very nice. As you can see, the, the trees are still there. Nothing's particularly blurry or fuzzy because the game rendering is still at uh, maximum. The effects are really still quite nice, not quite as high contrast, um, but still clear cut and you can see what's going on now. Certain settings I leave off, for example, shadows uh, and ambient creatures just add clutter, in my opinion. Um, there is see this sheeny fog here, which I don't know why. I'll have a look at that in one second. Um, long story short, though, anything that brings just extra visual effects to the game, I personally choose not to have because I think it makes things cluttered um, and harder to see. Now. Just briefly, this information straight from logical imp increments, so um, all respect for them for doing the original guide, as I said earlier. But basically, anti analyzing uh, has a median impact on FPS, uh, relatively 10 to 13 percent increase or decrease, depending on whether you have it on. Specular lighting is also medium, around 10 percent. Uh, light bloom is negligible. Um, high water quality has a high impact of around 15%, uh, but that's only when you're looking at the river. Atmospheric fog has a median impact of 6 to 8%, but you can barely tell whether it's on or not. I challenge you to try. Um, additive light pass has variable effect on FPS depending on what is showing on screen, can be between 0 and 10%. 
World lighting has a variable impact on FPS depending on what is showing on screen. It can be anywhere from 5 to 15%. Ambient occlusion, just let me get rid of these creeps because the noise is bugging me. Um, ambient occlusion uh, has a high impact uh, on FPS around 12 to 15%. Ambient creatures has a low impact of around 5%, but again, what does it bring, so why not take the extra 5%? Um, render quality has the highest, uh, around 20% if you set the slider to 50. Um, yep, that's that pretty much. Um, shadow quality has uh, varying effects, medium quality impacts around 8% uh, and can, in certain situations, by other, altering other shadow settings, alter up to 15 to 20%. Um, their recommendation, again, logical increments, is that if you want a slight boost, turn off atmospheric fog, turn off world lighting, turn off ambient creatures, uh, see how it goes. If you want to take the next step, go to uh, turning specular lighting off, high quality water off, uh, and that should see you a 45 to 50% increase, uh, which still, in my opinion, looks good. That's quite similar to what I have set. And then uh, shadow quality you can set to medium, render quality to 80%, and in theory you should be seeing up to a 70% increase in FPS. Um, now obviously that's all relative to your hardware and software configurations while you play and a lot of other settings you have. Um, but all of that aside, realistically you can run Dota quite well on a toaster. Um, as I said, this video is just my opinion on what I think looks nicest and can allow you to make easier and faster decisions to a degree. Um, you know, I'm no god tier player, but I like the way my game looks and I think it's quite clean. So I hope this helps some of you. Uh, I will leave the information from Logical Increments with a link to them down below and also just a quick summary that I copied out of there that I read out. So thanks for watching and I'll catch you later.